Okay, so today we're going to look at our first thing, which is our large sample confidence intervals for proportions. So what you want to have is you want to have the purple sheet by you, and you want to have your formula sheet by you. So make sure you have both of those out now. So basically, the beginning of second semester, we're going to start talking about confidence intervals. So that's like a, an interval estimate, basically, of what we're trying to find. If we're trying to find like a true proportion, we usually give an interval estimate. So a confidence interval for a population characteristic is an interval of plausible values for that characteristic. It's constructed so that with a chosen degree of confidence, the value of the characteristic will be captured inside that interval. So you have a certain confidence level that's associated with the confidence interval estimate, it's the success rate of the method used to construct the interval. So you're going to be working on the rest confidence intervals and confidence levels in chapters basically 9 and 10, and really the rest of the semester. So remember this stuff from chapter 8. Remember I said chapter 8 is very important. So when we're looking at um, a sampling distribution of p hat, so it's a sample proportion. Remember, the mean is equal to the population parameter. There's your p hat formula for standard deviation. And here's our central limit theorem. n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. These are going to end up starting to be our conditions. So <clears throat> what we look for in a confidence interval is we're looking at this, the, kind, like the percent of all the samples that would be within a range. So, like, if I'm looking at 95%, we've kind of worked on this in first semester. So, approximately 95% of all the large samples will result in a p hat that is within. Now, we want to figure out the standard deviations. I'm just going to tell you it's 1.96 for now. And we'll look at why later. So, what this means is that if we're looking at a confidence interval, 95% of all the possible samples the p, the true population proportion, will be in the interval of p hat minus 1.96 times the standard deviation to p hat plus 1.96 times the standard deviation. So somewhere in this interval, 95% of the time, you'll capture that true population proportion. So if it's supposed to be like 50%, 95% of the time, that interval will capture that 50%. You may have that 5% where it doesn't capture it, and that comes up because that's kind of like your margin of error. So if P is unknown and N is large, we estimate P, we estimate the standard deviation using P hat. But most of the time we would like to know P. Okay, and you can do this as long as N times P is greater than or equal to 10 and N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. So this is what we have to check every time. And we kind of did that. Um, first semester two in chapter eight. So where did I get the 1.96? So with a confidence interval, the general formula I just gave you, you have to look at a few things. So we're going to start off, these are going to be like our conditions from now on. We're actually going to write conditions. Eventually we'll get to where like this whole chapter has a certain process and that's what the purple sheet is for. Okay, the purple sheet's going to help you with figuring out how I want things to look. So the first one is that p hat has to be a sample proportion from a random sample. So somewhere in the um, setup, I have to tell you it's from a random sample. Then you have to check the central limit theorem, that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. If either one doesn't work, I'll show you what happens. Then here's your formula. So p hat plus or minus, your z critical value is going to change, and then your standard deviation. So how do we figure out our z critical value? Before, I just said it's 1.96. But that only works if you're going to be 95% confident. If I'm looking at like 98% confident, the cumulative area, if I look up 0.99, so if I look in my formula sheet, and I look up where 0.99 is, that means 99% should be less than that. If I get as close to 0.99 as I can, 0.9901 is 
And remember how we talked about if it's positive 2.33 and it's an in-between, our other one's going to be negative 2.33. That's why it's a plus minus up here. So for 98% confidence, we use 2.33. So if I'm trying to find like a confidence level, the more confident you are, the wider your interval. So if I look up 80% confident, I'm really looking up 0.9 because it's going to be, think about 80%, the middle 80, you'd have 10 on each side. So I'm really going to look up 0.9. And if I want to get as close to 0.9 as I can, I end up with 1.28. Oops, you can't see. 1.28. That gets me as close to 0.9 as I can. So that's our Z critical value, 1.28. Then if I were to look up 95 for the 90% interval, it's 1.645. I'm not going to go through all of these because really I'll show you which three are the most important. If I look up 0.975, I would end up at 1.96. That's kind of where I got that number from. We just looked up 0.99 and we got 2.33. If I'm 99% confident, my Z critical value is going to be 2.575, 3.10, and 3.30. Honestly, these are the most important three. We work with these the most. Okay, so. I eventually just got to the point where I would memorize them. So these would be the most important three to, three to remember. Um, otherwise, you can always look it up. So let's try an example. So with a uh, confidence interval, like I said, there's going to be a certain um, way that I want you to write it out. So let's take our first example. So for a project, a student randomly sampled 182 other students. So right there, we have a word randomly. And at a large university and determined that if the majority of students were in favor of a proposal to build a field house. He found that 75 were in favor of the proposal. Let P be the true proportion of students that favor the proposal. Find the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of students who favor the proposal. So if you notice, I have a whole blank sheet because we're going to be writing a lot. So this purple sheet is your semi-official format for confidence interval. On the back, you have hypothesis testing. We'll get to that in chapter 10. So the first thing you always want to do is check your conditions. So first thing I always write is conditions. So your first condition is always, is it a random sample? So here we had P hat is from a random sample. Okay, so that's your first check always, and that's what it says here, condition one, statement about simple random sample. Step condition two is statement about normality of sampling distribution or population distribution. That's kind of like central limit theorem. Okay, if you think about that as a central limit theorem. So, if we check this, n times p, which was 75, because it said 75 were in favor of the proposal. That's greater than or equal to 10. And times 1 minus P, if you did 182 students, 182 minus 75 is 107, also greater than or equal to 10. So then we could say, by the central limit theorem, our sampling distribution is approximately normal. Okay? That's going to be your sentence that you're going to write. And you want to make sure you write sampling distribution because we're looking at a sample. Condition three is going to say, it says give the confidence interval, and give the name of the confidence interval and the reason. I'm not really going to do a reason, but the name of our confidence interval for today is we are doing a one proportion Z interval. Okay, eventually we'll get to all kinds of different um, intervals, but for today it's just a one proportion Z interval. And then condition four, it says describe the parameter. You've got to give me what P is. 
So P is the true proportion of students who favor the proposal. So here I'm looking for, is this in context of the problem? Now sometimes, just like this one, it's already written in there. So you don't have to really think about it too much. But you need to know what P is because that's what we're estimating. We're using P hat to estimate P. Okay, so then the second part, I'm going to do it up here, is your testing, which is listed here, your testing. So first of all, you got to give me some information. So you got to give me N. Ignore DF. So ignore DF right now. Ignore X bar. Ignore this stuff. We want P hat. So you got to give me like all the numbers, all the critical information. So here N's 182. P hat is 75 over 182, which is... 0.412. And then you have to write a sentence that says blank comp percent confidence gives us a Z or T critical value of whatever. Again, ignore the T for today. So we want a 95% confidence interval. So 95% confidence gives us a Z critical value of 1.96. Okay, that was from this part, 1.96. So I need to see these three things in the testing. Then you do your formula, which is here. So it's P hat plus or minus your Z critical value times your standard deviation. So we do 0 0.412 plus or minus 1.96 times 0 0.412, 0 0.588 divided by 182. Now, the good thing is you can do this on the calculator. So I want you to hit pause right now and I want everybody to get their graphing calculator out. If you don't have one, there's some on my desk. So when we're doing testing, you're, we're going to go to the testing menu, which is in stat, the stat menu, but go over to test. So we're going to do all of these tests eventually second semester. But for now, we're going to start with test A. It should be one prop Z int. So we're doing a one proportion Z interval. So here off to the side, you can write it's test A, one proportion Z interval. And I always tell students that this kind of helps you figure out what you're going to do for condition three, because they should match. So one proportion Z interval. Now this time you have to give it an actual number. It cannot be a decimal. So here it's nice because it's 75 out of 182. But if I had given you an actual like 90% or 10%, you would actually have to find the number. Okay, and if it's a decimal, round up. So our C level is our confidence level, so 95%. Then you hit calculate. And then it spits out the interval along with P hat and N. So our interval here is from 0.341 to 0.484. So what this is saying is somewhere within that interval is the true proportion of students who favor the proposal. So then your last part, so you did your conditions, you've done your testing, your last part is your conclusion. You always need to write a conclusion. It's basically taking this number and writing it in a complete sentence. What are we actually saying when we get this number? And it's kind of a fill in the blank. It's on the purple sheet. We are whatever percent confident that the true, use what you did in number four, is between blank and blank with units. Now today, it's just going to be percent, so we don't have to say anything. But once we get to means, we're going to have to add in units. So, we are 95% confident that the true proportion of students that favor the proposal 
to build a field house is between 0.341 and 0.483. So that's our conclusion. So this is what you're going to be doing the most of second semester. We'll have conditions, some sort of testing, some sort of conclusion. Okay, now if you want to be more confident, I don't know, if we want more confidence, you sacrifice accuracy. You can't spell. So like if I looked at a 98% confidence interval, if I go back to my testing, and I switch to 98, look what happens to the confidence interval. It gets 0 0.327, 0 0.497. So it got larger. So the more confidence, so think about it as confidence intervals increase, you get a wide, wider interval. Okay. So, you're going to be doing a lot of that. We're also going to be going backwards. So, you have standard error of a statistic. So, the standard error of a statistic is estimated by the standard deviation. So, we have sigma p hat is the square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat over n. And so, that's the same thing. We call this standard error. p hat. 1 minus p hat over n. Sometimes you see like margin of error. It's kind of the same thing. Margin of error just includes your um, z critical value. So if you ever like read the newspaper, they'll be like, well, the margin of error is 2%. It's really focusing on this, these two. This is just your standard error. So we can use that to talk about sample size. We can actually go backwards. So if I know, um, if we want to use the formula for a bound on error of an estimation to determine the sample size required, we can estimate a population proportion within a certain amount with some degree of confidence. So basically what we do is we work backwards. So since the sample size n is used to determine the standard error, we can substitute values in the formula below and basically solve for n. So b is your standard error. I don't know why they use b, but we do. So we look at our z critical value times p hat 1 minus p hat over n, and you basically solve for n. That can tell you what sample size we need to have. Now here's the tricky part. The value of p may be estimated with prior information if somebody did a sample. If we don't have any prior information, we have to use p is equal to 0.5 so that we can get a conservatively large value. Remember, in a proportion, we're only going from 0 to 1. So if we don't know the true proportion, we stick to the middle, 0.5, so that we can make it as wide as we want. Because the closer we get to 0 and 1, the, close, the smaller our interval has to be. And then, once you get your final answer, you can always round up to the nearest integer. Again, it allows us to overestimate. Better to overestimate the people you need to ask than underestimate. So here's an example. A me member of the Michigan Department of Education would like to determine a 95% confidence interval to estimate within 0.3% for the proportion of all high school students who work with a tutor outside the school day. How large of a sample is needed if it's estimated that 18% of all students work with a tutor? So we already think we have p hat is 0.18. Our b here is 0.03. Our Z critical value, Z star, if it's 95%, has to be 1.96. Like I said, eventually you're going to want to memorize these. So let's plug in our formula and solve. So you have 0 0.03 equals 1.96 times 0 0.18, 0 0.82 over N. Okay, now we just have to do algebra. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 1.96. Point zero three divided by 1.96 gives me that craziness. 
0.0153 equals square root 0.18 times 0.82 will be 0.1476 divided by n. Now the next step would then be to take this thing and square it. So I'm going to go back up, take that answer, square it, and the the reason I don't want to ask, I don't want to round is because then I'll get a more accurate answer. So I'm trying to do this without um, rounding. And then I get this crazy number. So 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4 is 1.1476 divided by n. If you think about this as a proportion, you can cross multiply. So 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4 n will equal 0.1476. So I'm going to divide this by this craziness. So I'm going to take 0.1476 divided by my answer. So here n is 630.02, so round up. So we want 631 students. That's going to be our sample. And you always want to make sure you add units. Okay, what people, what are we going to, who are we going to ask? So once you figure out the formula, it's real easy. You just got to do some algebra. So here's another one. So in the 1991 publication of the book, The Final Exit, includes a controversial topic of doctor-assisted suicide. Different societies in the medical community quoted very different figures regarding the proportion of primary care physicians who have participated in some form of doctor-assisted suicide. Suppose that a survey of physicians is to be designed to estimate the proportion within 0.05 with 95% confidence. How many primary care physicians should be included in this random sample? So again, we don't know what P hat is here. We don't actually know how many uh, primary care physicians like think they should have doctor assisted suicide in general. So we're gonna estimate with 0.5 because it's gonna give us our biggest estimate. B is 0 0.05, Z star here is again 1.96. So then plug it in and solve, so 0 0.05, was 1.96 times 0.5 times 0.5 over n. So take 0 0.05 divided by 1.96. 0 0.0255 equals square root of 0.25 divided by n. And you'll find out it ends up being kind of the same thing every time. Square 6.5 times 10 to the negative fourth equals 0.25 divided by n. If I cross multiply, you get 0.25 equals 6.5 times 10 to the negative fourth times n, and then divide. So 0.25 divided by my answer. So n here is 384.16, so round up. So we need 385 physicians. Okay, so when you're working on your homework tonight, try to have this sheet handy and try to have these, this chart handy, and that will help you with your confidence intervals. And that's it.